This is Jared from Commit to Quality, and today we're going to go over how we can review and debug our tests in a post mortem manner. And we'll use this using a tool called Trace Viewer, which comes bundled in with Playwright Test, which is perfect. So, what is Trace Viewer? And like Playwright say here, so Playwright Trace Viewer is a GUI, a graphical user interface tool that helps you explore recorded playwright traces after your test script has run. Essentially, it's a snapshot of your recorded run that gives you more than just a video or more than just a screenshot. It gives you DOM snapshots, action snapshots, network traces, console logs, and so much more. It gives you a timeline as, you, as your test has gone through each step of its life. So enough talk of this. You can look at the documentation, have a play around with it, but let's actually jump into action with this. So I've got this basic test here. I'll copy it and put a link in the description. All we're doing is going to the computer database website, add to computer and assert in that computer is there. However, I have forced a failure on here. So I've got commit qualities when the computer name is commit quality. So this is going to fail. Now, if I just execute this test with NPX playwright test, you can just see what I said is true, where the test is going to fail because of that reason. Let's clear this down. Now, one thing I want to say before we jump into all of this is Trace Viewer can be used not only on failure, it can be used on anything. But in this example, I'm going to be working off failures because it's going to show you a bit more and it makes more sense of why you're going to use them. So there's two ways of turning on your Trace Viewer. You can do it via the command line by saying npx playwright test and if I do hyphen hyphen there we are trace I can say on which means it'll record for everything so if I just put on for now just to show you what's output you can see over here a test results folder has just been created and inside it we have this trace.zip file which the folder name has actually matched what the test is as well so you can see um, test one is the spec file basic test is the test name and chromium is the project we are running in which is here. We only have one project, which is why I haven't specified in this, only picked up on that. If I had multiple projects, it would have, it would have recorded multiple traces inside different folders. So all of this would have been the same up to the project name, and it would have the second folder would have been whatever we name the second project. Let's just clear this a moment. I'm not going to go into the trace just yet, because really you're probably not going to be set in trace to on or trace to on failure in the command line. Instead, where you're probably going to want to do it is inside the Playwright config. And there's two places where you can do this. You can do it inside your use property where you pass to an object and more properties. So I already have one, but if you don't, inside your Playwright test config, add use with an object. And inside it, you can see I already have it, but it'd be trace and you can set it to whatever you want. So if I do this, you've got off, on, on first retry, retry, retain on failure, and retry with trace. So I'm going to set this to retain on failure, which means every time we have a failure, it's going to record a trace. That's one place you can do it, which is global. If you want to change this inside specific projects, you can do that by passing your use property with the object again. And inside, you can say trace, and you can set it to whatever you want. And this will take priority over whatever's inside your global config. So if I just set it to off for now, even though it's set to on failure and we know we're going to have a failure in the default config, which is here, because we run in in this project of Chromium, what we're going to see is when I run this, this test results folder will clean itself up and there'll be no trace recorded. So let's just prove that one to you. Here we are, the test failed and there's no test results folder because we've set it off here. I'm going to put this back to uh, retain on failure and let's execute the test and let's get into the trace file awesome so there we are it failed the test results folder now now contains a folder with that trace zip file for us and there's two ways you can open this one you can use the command line argument here so if i just copy this this gives output as part of the test as well so player has been very kind given this i can paste it into here hit enter and it will load up the trace for us here. If you don't want to do that, 
What you can also do is go to a progressive web app which was created by Playwright. So if you go to the documentation, uh, at the top it says you can view it locally, which we just did, or we can drag and drop our trace zip file into this browser. So let's open this in a new tab, and it tells you here, drop your Playwright trace to load, and it also says that it's a progressive web app, so it does not send your trace anywhere, it just opens it locally, so it's all safe for us. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag it into here just to show you this way as well. So if I go into test results and I just reveal in File Explorer, let's go back to the web page. I'm dragging the trace.zip file and only the trace.zip file into here. And it's loaded up exactly what we've seen when we done it locally on the command. It's just in your browser instead. So two ways you can look at it. I'm going to close down this one because we've already got it in the browser now. And this this really blew my mind when I moved to Playwright. I've got to say, I really enjoy using the Trace Viewer tool. It's not perfect. Bugs have been raised. There's certain things you might find, oh, that doesn't make sense. There's sometimes where actions don't appear, but it's a very good tool. And it's really good for debugging in that kind of post-mortem run manner as well. So let's break this down a little bit. So what's inside the trace? At the top, we have the timeline here. So you can see you've got what's happening. So you've got the new page. Let's go into the computer database website. We look into click add a new computer here. You fill in all the details with commit quality. And then it's waiting for me done and it's doing the assertion part for us. And if you highlight over them, what you might be able to see, so if you're looking down this left side, as we hovering over these actions, you can actually see, it's highlighted in this gray kind of tone, that the action being performed, the one we scroll in through on the timeline, is where it is. So if I want to jump to locate there, if I, if I hover over this, we can see up the top a little bit, this was marked red, and you can see it highlighted down in the action section. So you've got a full timeline kind of recorded there of exactly what's happened on each individual action. Now let's go into the actual actions part of this then. So down here you've got everything that's happened. So this is all of the test steps that we've taken. So if I go back to our test file, you can see we've gone to a web page. We then tried to click something. We're trying to fill in details. And here you've got get by text trying to fill in our name, fill in in produce. So it's just following exactly what you've told the test to do. On here, you have action snapshot. So let's let's look at the click. On the click, you can see on the action snapshot, it showed us exactly where we've tried to click something. You've got this kind of little red hit marker on here. This is really useful. And one example I've had in this, where a button was a part of a div. And even though the button was, say, sitting here, what actually happened is when I was trying to click it, it was actually clicking the middle of the screen because that's where they thought they was living inside the div. As soon as I put trace viewer on, I saw, oh, the hit marker was over here. So I scoped it down a little bit more into, say, where this button lives now, and it fixed the problem. It was a really quick and easy way of debugging what was wrong in my test. Not only do we have this action snapshot, we also have a before and after. So before it, we can see we were just on the page, nothing really happened, didn't click anything. After we clicked it is what what happened after the action. So of course, add a new computer takes us to the add new computer page, and that's exactly what it's shown us. And you can see that on the fill options. On action, you can see it's highlighting this. Before, there was nothing, and then after we've done the fill, it's added commit quality, and hopefully it makes sense with the others. You've got the action, you've got the before, where we filled in commit quality, but not introduced, and then after we have that. What you may have seen as well is where we've had the test fail, it's told us as well. It's got this kind of red exclamation mark and seems set is timed out. It's give us a screenshot, so the action is nothing because it's just an expect. The before is nothing because, once again, it's just an expect, and the after is nothing because it's an assertion. It's an expect assertion. But over here, in the call log, it's given us what action was called, the time and duration, as well as the parameters, return value, and the log of things. So here it's telling us when it happened, the duration, of course it timed out, so it couldn't give us all of that. The parameters passed through is the locator we were looking for. The expression we would expect in this locator to be visible. Expected value was undefined, which means it didn't find it. And the timeout that it waited was 5,000 milliseconds or five seconds. And it's even give us this log because 
because this is a web first assertion you can see it's waiting for it to be visible it's tried its best up to that five seconds and failed really useful and you don't only get this on failure if we just go back to any of these as well you can see exactly here you've got the time the duration of when it happened so 29 milliseconds what the locator is was it strict yep so we said we have to find it strict on this typically this could be used for things like when you're looking for text when you're setting your locator to look for text it's telling us the value we passed through and it's even giving us the log of it was looking for that element it was then trying to fill it in waiting for it to be visible making sure it's actionable and then it's even said we found that it was visible, enabled, and editable, and it's filled it out for us. So call is really useful for looking through things. You've also got the console logs as well. So we could go into console here, and if there were any issues, so if you had maybe a console log saying something went wrong, you can see everything inside this. You have a network tab. So I think I just saw it on something. There we are. So on this one, we've got the network tab because because we click the compute create computer so before we were clicking this button and it would redirect us so it's giving us all the network requests which were performed as well so we can see a post and three gets happening in here you can did you can dig into them see what's going on these can be really useful when you're using kind of uh routing or playing around with mock in some requests you can definitely do that and you could get all the information directly from here kind of similar to how you'd get in chrome's dev tools and then we can click on source as well which is essentially the source code for your entire test and it's highlighting exactly where this action was performed so if i click on this one we can see it was this expect action where it was expecting to be visible if we go on to locator.name it highlights that so it's just shown us we can map it up this way as well so you could say okay i know this is filling in the name as part of my test what line is it in part of that i can find it directly inside this source tab well, honestly i know i've said it but it really blew my mind when we we're doing this and this coming from something like selenium this just blew it out of the water for me and this is what i really sold my teams on when i was introducing playwright migration into our company of course there's extra benefits but this tool was just fantastic in my opinion now i haven't mentioned so we've mentioned actions and we've gone over all the kind of different tabs we have over here as well but also there's a metadata tab and on here you can see metadata such as the time the action was performed what browser engine was used the viewport what the viewport was um if it was mobile how many pages actions and events were recorded all that good stuff so you might have off your developers with your fountain or can you give me you know what your viewport was if you found maybe a ui bug and you could go directly into this and see exactly what it is without having to dive into the config or you can just send this file over to others i i genuinely believe this tool is a game changer and has so much power and it's been a huge blessing to my day-to-day -day work i could give you hundreds of examples of where i've been using this tool and this is why i kind of wanted to give you a a deep dive into all the different parts of it so you know you can see there's there's this timeline of exactly what happened you've got these actions you can look at the console logs the call stack everything now just jumping back into the code a second like i said i want to remember this can be done just on anything as well you can change the values in the playwright config so i'm just going to delete it from the project a moment so we only have one to deal with you can change the values in here so if you wanted it to be always on you can do that that's no problem at all i'm gonna keep it on retain on failure for the moment what i want to show you is let's create a new folder inside tests and call it example let's copy this test inside here let's just rerun the test a moment so both are expected to fail of course i just want to show you how kind of playwright deals with the cleaning up of everything how playwright deals with the organization of this as well so by default the test results folder um, is cleaned and being re-added and here you can see the folder name the test file name the test declaration and the project um, mapped to a folder a subfolder and then you've got this original test one spec which we worked with as one as well so it handles all of this really well for i'm going to delete this now because that's all i wanted to show what you've got to remember if you're playing around with these values is if you have things like multiple retries say i say three tries of one and now let's just clear this and rerun the test 
on a th in this instance because we've said retain on failure both runs are going to save the zip file the trace zip file so there'll be two folders and i think it appends with like retry one on them so they both failed let's go into test results and you'll see here that there's been another one marked up as retry one so you could if you didn't want things like this and you only wanted to maybe uh, retain it on the first retry you could do that we could say Ooh, let's get the IntelliSense back and we could say on first retry so the original failure wouldn't actually record a trace only the first retry would so if we add multiple retries so we change this to three we'd only get one trace which is on the first one and that's just a nice way of maybe not bulking out everything too much still renames it to retry one because that's what you've said do it only on first retry I haven't done too much. I set retries to zero. One last thing I kind of want to show to you as well is if you use HTML, HTML reporting, by default, these traces will be added to the HTML report. So if I was to execute this again, let's just wait for it to fail. We should see the HTML report will open for us after the test is finished. And inside here, I can scroll down and you can see this trace file has already been added. So this is really good for like continuous integration environments or even just as examples, you could send your development teams or you could output the test results folder, this HTML report, and people can look into it and they can say, okay, here's the trace, let's go into it from this. Really good. I just want to show this because it's just showing the power of debugging and also the power of reporting that happens straight out of the box with Playwright test. And just clear this just to keep it nice and neat you know if you've made it this far i'm going to give you a little bit more information um which might help with your kind of organization maybe you don't want it going directly into um the test results folder maybe you want to change it and we can do that as well we can add in to the config a new property called output directory if we hover over it it'll tell us what it's for so it's for files created during test execution by default it says here it goes to test results but what if i said I want it to be called commit quality. For some reason, don't don't ask me why. Let's just say we want them stored there instead. Well, we can do that. We can say commit quality. Let's run the test again now. And instead of test results, it being logged to test results, we should see a new folder called commit quality where it's going to be logged to. So here we are, commit quality, and that's what our trace is. And just like everything else as well, course i'd have to delete this test results folder because it doesn't do that anymore but just like anything else as well if i now make this test pass it's going to show you that it also cleans up this folder for us as well so let's run it test will pass you can see commit quality is gone but now been re-added test has passed nothing inside it because we are only retaining our traces on failure and the output directory has been changed to commit quality. So that was just kind of a nice little quick win, bit more information if you've made it this far into the video. I hope this has helped. I think it's a really, really useful and powerful tool for debugging or even just for kind of checking tests or how long actions are performed. It doesn't matter, there's so many possibilities you've got with this. I hope that's kind of come through on this video. If you do have any questions or comments, please drop them down below. A like and subscribe is massively appreciated. Thank you for watching and have a good day.